Hey fam, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today, let's, uh, you know, go over some ghost stories. Let's get back into the ghostly shit, all right? YouTube's been letting me down on these stories this week, so I guess we're just gonna have to do it ourselves. So we're gonna start off with Reddit user, nice Reddit person. This was posted four freaking hours ago, hey. And I used to live in a garage, and me, my mom, and I think my sister as well, have felt uncomfortable slash scared of the place. My mom said before that she has seen things before, but it wasn't so clear. I remember once when I was probably seven, it was night and it was so dark I couldn't see anything. And at some point I saw two figures. One was giant and red and one was skinny and short and blue. And I remembered that I got so scared I started waking up my parents because they slept right next to me. And my mom said she couldn't see anything but she was still scared because she believes in ghosts. And my dad, which was born in a ranch in Mexico, wasn't scared at all because he'd never seen a ghost. And I was crying and screaming. And now, skip to around 2020, I was gonna go to sleep at my house and I was watching YouTube, but nothing scary, cannot really. <laughs> and I saw both of the figures again, but they were shrunken and skinnier and I was crying. A year later, in early 2021, I was at the kitchen looking for a snack and I saw the red figure again and the sun was out. I remember he was trying to speak, but then faded away. A couple days later, I searched up the red figure and there in these woods in Los Angeles where I live, are people have reported a red figure. So, so it's not just you. That's always nice. That's always lovely. Yep, yep, that's great. That's just, that's just great. Goddamn Ouija board post. Fam, from my understanding, this is from Imperial Supplies. From my understanding, Ouija boards were invented by Hasbro or Milton Bradley a long time ago and shouldn't hold any occult significance whatsoever because of this. However, nice lead in. A few years ago, I worked overnight at a drug rehab. The clients had made a makeshift one and were up using it. I was making fun of them saying they just move it on their own and they said ask it something we wouldn't know. So I'm across the room. I didn't touch it at all myself. I said, what's my middle name? My middle name is Alan. They spelled it out correctly. There's no possible way for them to have known that short of seeing my HR paperwork. My coworkers didn't even know. I said, okay, what's the name of the street I grew up on? What are we trying to figure out your password? They got the first four letters right before I stopped them. Fuck that. No, 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 no. Now you just got me like, what? I feel like I have to like translate, even though it's technically in English. So wish me luck. This is Reddit user Mike1999 of Halo. We've read yours before, haven't we, Mikey? So howdy day, friends. I'm back with another fun post. Me and my best friend's trip to an abandoned house what could go wrong? Okay, so me and my friend, we will name him Bill for the story. But anyway, we go to Shelbyville, Kentucky, to a house we were told about. It's about five miles off of Mount Eden Road. In case, you know, you're around that area, I want to check that shit out. The house has been demolished since. And then we found out when returning to the spot, however, that's a story for another subreddit. Okay, moving on. But anyway, this story, the house was old, probably 120 years old, maybe older. It's like Victorian era, I think. Three story with a wind around porch. I love wrap around porches in Victorian houses. Oh my God. And a well for water on the porch. Like that's nice. You don't gotta walk for a mile for that shit. Nice. So we entered the house to explore. And first off, 
the house's living room was in pretty good condition compared to what we thought it would be. So Bill and I were exploring when Bill and I saw this watch on the wall. Thinking clock. <laughs> but I keep imagining this like <laughs> this digital watch is like on a thumbtack or something. <laughs> Bill the smart one, he grabbed the watch off the wall. Literally the moment he took it off the wall, we heard some quite slow footsteps above us. Well, me, I have a brain. <laughs> I said, fuck this. I'm ready to leave. Bill, in his infinite wisdom, that sounds like shade coming. I mean, that just, that kind of sounds like shade. So says, I got a knife and a flashlight. I want to go check it out. So I decided to follow him upstairs because I can't let him die alone, I guess. Plus he has the car keys. See, I would happily wait out in the car. Like, I mean, it depends. I'm not under it right now. Nah, I'd totally follow him. I Anything happens, I mean, you know where the car keys went. But anyway, we hear the footsteps on the third floor. So we go up and when we get there, it stops. We literally checked around the room and no one was there. And that's when the front door slammed. And the same moment, his car alarm went off. In my infinite wisdom, oh now you're the smarty pants. I climbed outside through the window on the roof and he followed. The car was fine, by the way. His car cam pointing at the house didn't show anyone walk to it from the house. I just remember we got to the car and Bill drove off. And I remember this one thing. Bill turned to me and said these words, hey, did you see the skinny guy in the attic too? As we drove off. Aren't those, isn't that like just, I mean, you know, <laughs> that shit. I mean, <laughs> fuck no. This is from Reddit user Kenny underscore 631. The thing in the corner. There is nothing more disconcerting than when you're reading in bed and your normally docile cat, who was sleeping at the foot of the bed, suddenly jumps up, arches her back, her hair standing on end, ears flat, and letting out the most horrible, ferocious growl I've ever heard while staring at the corner of the room. I was around 16 or 17 at the time, reading in bed before falling asleep. I don't remember what I was reading. Could be Stephen King, Anne Rice, or some other author. I do remember it was engrossing. Well, now I want to know what it was. My cat, a manx, tailless kiete, was sleeping soundly at the foot of the bed, hogging it to be exact. Isn't it funny how cats can still do that? What is that? Spread out, practically the width of the bed. Yep, where I had hardly any room for my feet. Dude, my cat, I went, I lived in this one place. I had a twin bed mattress, right? My fucking black cat, that little shit, like that, at that point it was up against the wall, right? He would get between me and the wall and would like push on the wall and knock my ass off the bed. May he rest in peace. All right, so I wasn't much of a TV person preferring to read over watching some scripted show full of nonsense. So I'm sitting there reading. Everything is quiet except my cat snoring. Yeah, she did that. Just enjoying my book. The room was quiet and mostly in shadow as the only light was the one on my nightstand. It was the largest room in the house since it was the finished basement. I hated cleaning it though. Okay, first of all, I'm really enjoying this. I'm like, you wrote this very well. Jesus Christ. I feel the pull of sleep beginning to reach out to me. Not quite tired enough, but not gonna be able to stay awake much longer opting to read a few more pages when suddenly my cat precious mom's idea <laughs> i mean things are precious okay precious beings damn it don't just blame the mom you know that kitty was precious jumps up growls at the corner of the room i mean full-on attack mode arched back hair standing on end ears flat it was his growl his growl I'm scared shitless at this point because I see nothing there, but she's hollering, howling, hissing, and growling at something she 
can only see. I'm watching her, staring at the corner, seeing nothing. I do what any rational person in my position would do. Sink under the covers and cover my head. <laughs> I couldn't wrap my head at what got her so riled up. Then as suddenly as it started, it stopped. She licked her paws. I was peeking. <laughs> Satisfied that she chased away whatever invisible intruder there was and went back to sleep. Okay, bitch. So meanwhile, I'm still jittery and not sure I could fall asleep, but I was going to do it with the light left on. Yeah, right. I thought maybe she was having a nightmare, but there were two other occasions. That wasn't the only time. A couple of weeks later, I woke to her hissing and staring at the same corner. It wasn't full of fury. It was more like warning whatever to keep its distance. I didn't see anything. Third time, same thing. Woke up to her hissing at that corner after a couple of weeks went by. But this time, I felt brave. I got out of bed and walked over to that corner, trying to find out what is upsetting her. And it was cold, the type of cold that chills you to the bone. It was summer. That was quite a few years ago. And Precious has been gone for almost 20 years or so. Uh, yeah, that was quite a few years ago. Yep, yep. I still miss that cat even to this day. That sounds like a pretty darn movie. Wait, what? Next I'll tell you about my experience trying to summon a demon using the lesser key of Solomon? Mm. Kenny underscore 631, what the fuck? What the, what the actual fuck? That was a tease. Damn, damn. See, man, I just want some ghost stories. I don't want to be teased. I don't want to be teased. I want some shirt. All right, fam. I suppose I'm going to read a read a book at some point so that I can review a book again at some point. But damn it, I've just been watching everything. I've been apparently wanting my stories in visual format. Okay, I'll get to it. I'm in the middle of like 50. I'll finish one eventually. Until next time and beyond, please take care. I'm trying as well.